Now, before I begin this video, I just want to say shout out to Jim Teppin, who sent me this dope wooden American flag that's in the background. I know a lot of you guys have been asking, when are you going to get something in the background? Um, and I really wanted something unique and patriotic for my background. And Jim um, hit me up on Twitter and was like, hey, man, I want to send you this flag. It's really dope. I looked at it. I was like, yo, this is dope. Um, and it was the perfect thing. Right. So he sent it to me. Um, you can see it in the background. Let me know what you guys think. I think it's awesome. I think it's a perfect representation of how I want to represent myself to you guys. And I'm almost at 100,000 subs. And I just want to say thank you so much for supporting my channel. I love you guys. And I hope to continue to provide a fair and balanced perspective. Thank you. All right, guys, so throughout my 20 some years of life, there's only a couple certainties that I can say about this life. The first is that there are no certainties in life. And the second is that the Democrat will play the race card no matter what. OK, and that is exactly what former President Barack Obama is doing in his new book called A Promise land it's basically a memoir of his presidency and he talks about some of the things he regrets and he goes deep 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 on his thoughts regarding his eight years in office but before we get into that my name is greg foreman and you're watching a black conservative perspective make sure you like comment and subscribe most importantly share a black conservative perspective aka a far leftist worst nightmare you can also follow me on twitter at g foreman bcp let's get it all right guys so like i said <sighs> democrats again playing a race car and it's really bad when the head democrat or at least you know the racial leader of the democrat former president barack hussein obama is playing the race card even though he's technically half white but in his new book a promised land former president obama goes in on president trump he claims that president trump quote promised an elixir for racial anxiety of millions of americans spooked by a black man in the white house so he is implying that white americans voted for president trump as a response to the election of a black man now those americans who obama implies appears racist were prey to the quote the dark spirits that had long been lurking on the edges of the modern republican party xenophobia anti-electoralism paranoid conspiracy theories and an empathy towards black and brown folks there you go, using that far left SJW language of black and brown folks. If you're Hispanic and you're watching this video, please tell me what you think they mean when they say black and brown. Does that sound inclusive to you? Because that's all they want to talk about, black and brown. I don't know who they're talking about. I, I really don't know who they're talking about. I mean, brown can be classified as I don't know who. But what these far left liberals fail to realize is that when you use terminology like black and brown, you're really playing into the corporate color coding of society that they really want you to do. Corporations love classifying people in the easiest way possible and color is nothing but a corporate classification. That's what it is. When you play the black and brown card obsessively, what happens is, is that you're doing nothing more than peddling the corporate narrative of division by race. Now, Obama continues, quote, it was as if my very presence in the White House had triggered a deep seated panic, a sense that the natural order has been disrupted, which is exactly what Donald Trump understood when he started peddling assertions that I had not been born in the United States and thus an illegitimate president now of course this is a response to president trump's birth of claims uh regarding president obama which to be quite honest with you guys i am not a fan of those claims um i think that it is very obvious that president obama is american and that he you know was qualified to be president from a citizenship standpoint 
And see, there you go. For anybody that says I'm just selling out for Trump, I'm telling you, that that is one thing about Trump I do not like. I do not like the, the birth of claim. I think they were not in good faith. That's just my opinion. Obama writes that he came to regard Trump's media ubiquity and characteristic shamelessness as mere exaggerated version of the Republican Party's attempts to appeal to white Americans' anxieties about the first black president, a sentiment he said had a migrated from the French GOP politics to the center an emotional almost visceral reaction to my presidency distinct from any differences in policy or ideology all right so furthermore in his book he started to talk about John McCain and how he wonders if uh John McCain would have chose a different vice presidential uh, running mate if he had known that Sarah Palin would be a catapult uh, to provide a template for the Republican Party to move more uh, farther right in his opinion and he's saying that John McCain did not like that in terms of where the party was going so now let's listen to Candace Owens give her response on Fox News in response to what President Obama had said. Let me just say this, the, the language that he's using, the rhetoric that is coming out of former Barack Obama's mouth is nothing short of absolutely despicable, in my opinion. Uh, this is a man that ran on the American dream. Everyone remembers where they were the night Barack Obama won. There was a kinetic, a kinetic energy on the ground. It felt like we finally had arrived at a place in this country where we could put the past in the past. And he ran on that image. He didn't run on race. He didn't run on denigrating half of Americans. And let me make this clear. We live in a majority white country. 60% of white people live in this country. It's a 13 percent black people in this country. Barack Obama became the president of the United States because white Americans supported him. And rather than show some unity, rather than show some respect for this country that gave him literally everything he has, Sean, he turns his back on that country and he says, look at this despicable country. It's it's broken. He is the first president that has ever sat in the White House and come out of the president, come out of the White House hating America. And that is what I believe about Barack Obama today. Now, I do not agree that President Obama uh, came out of the White House hating America. I don't think that President Obama hates America, but I do agree with Candace Owens in the sense that when Obama was elected, he ran on a campaign of hope and change. He brought a lot of people together. He did not just solely focus on race. He focused on what brought everybody together as Americans and our common goal. That's what he focused on. Now, could Obama be corrupt? Sure, just like a lot of other establishment politicians. And speaking of the establishment, that's why I think that Obama went wrong. I think that he came in campaigning on change, but the way he uh, ran his presidency, it was the same as all the other politicians that came before him. He basically tried to be Bill Clinton. And he was just an establishment president. There was really nothing different from a policy standpoint. I think that when reflecting on your presidency and what you did wrong, when you use race as a theme, people are going to see it as a cop out. And I think that a lot of people just don't like the policies that President Obama had enacted during his presidency. They just don't. People on the right don't like it, and people on the far left don't like it. That's the honest to God truth. The people on the far left don't feel like President Obama went far left enough. They felt like he was being a centrist, and the people on the right felt like President Obama uh, was basically moving towards socialism and that, you know, policies like Obamacare was an introduction to that. Because, one, a lot of people have seen their premiums rise and the cost of health care rise. Even though there are more people that are covered and have health insurance, a lot of people don't see the advantage or the benefit if it's shitty health insurance. Also, something that people agree with on both sides of the aisle in terms of the right and the far left, and particularly the Trump right, is that Obama was a war hawk in the middle east um we had isis rise on obama we had a lot of um conflicts with other countries on obama we had this the libya situation we had to deal with syria uh we got what's going on with yemen 
Obama's Middle East foreign policy is very, very, very sketchy, right? So you had Benghazi, you had all this other stuff that a lot of people just feel like Obama was just another continuation of the establishment politics in terms of how we handle what's going on in the Middle East and this endless wars that we continue to fight that really go nowhere. And that's how a lot of people felt about Obama. And I think that those are the type of things that former President Barack Obama should reflect on more, right? You should reflect on those things rather than race. Because when you use race, again, like I said, people are going to always see it as a cop out. You're copping out. You're trying to avoid having a real conversation and focusing on policies. Because, again, guys, I mean, under uh, President Trump, as you can see here, looking at this graph, the poverty rate by race in Hispanic origin from 1959 to 2019, you can see that the poverty rate for blacks and Hispanics and Asians and white people are basically at an all time low. It's never been lower than it's been under President Trump. Now, it has dwindled and kind of been uh, a stable under Barack Obama. Where it looks like he was about 25% throughout most of his presidency. But then as soon as President Trump took office, it really started to decline. And again, President Trump has had the highest minority turnout and votes for him than almost any Republican candidate since most black people used to be Republican before the civil rights era, right? So the thing is that using this race car really falls on deaf ears because Looking at the numbers, it just don't make sense on paper. It doesn't make sense. How can you say that race is the main factor when white people help you get elected first and foremost? Ben Carson, who probably would have won the Republican nomination had it not been for Trump, again, ran in 2016, is loved among the Republican Party. Herman Cain was a contender back in, I think, what, 2012? Herman Cain was a contender. And from a legitimate standpoint, not counting Kamala, who's not legitimate, the GOP has had black people be more competitive in their presidential races than the Democrats have. So you can't just say it's just a black and white thing. And then, like I said, taking into account that minority support for Republican Party has been at an all-time high because of Trump. These race claims are just baseless. And again, they help you get nowhere ultimately at the end of the day. And it's the same problem with AOC and all the other far left politicians is that they use racist as cop out to try to explain everything. And I try to tell these people over and over and over again. I really shouldn't be telling them because I'm really helping them out when I tell them this. You cannot lead into a conversation with race. Okay? When you lead into a conversation with race, People are going to tune you out. They're going to automatically come to conclusions about why you're saying what you're saying that are not going to be beneficial and are not going to help get your point across. OK, the GOP never talks to their constituents and say, hey, white people, you should vote for me because of X, Y and Z. They don't do that. And the GOP and Republican Party are the masters of of framing and using language, right? Naming policies, naming bills, painting the <laughs> centrist Democrats as socialist, right? That's an example, even though they're not. That's what they're the masters of doing. They've convinced people of these things because they understand language and framing. The Democrats suck at this. And the reason why they suck is because they're caught up in this race narrative that has no solution, that's never going anywhere, and that will never, ever, ever help them. They need to become more policy focused. Focus on the policies, okay? If your policies help the American people, talk about your policies. Don't talk about race. Race turns people off, and it is inherently divisive. So, that's my opinion on that. If he really wants to answer the question of why do people love President Trump and why did Trump become president, he really should be thinking about what policies he enacted that helped give the rise to smile like President Trump, 
who appeals to working class people, who feel like they're being left behind by politicians, who feel like that they are getting the shit in of the stick. He needs to really think more about that and why President Trump appeals to those people. And the answer is not white supremacy. I'm telling you. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.